Good morning children. <coughs> Today in chemistry we are going to start with a new chapter and that is air and atmosphere. Now air it is mostly gases. So air is present everywhere around us. So uh, where on earth do we find air? Now air is present everywhere around us. It is present in the surface layer of the earth. It is also uh, located in the soil. But air is not only located in the soil. It is also present in, uh, in the earth's uh, air layer which is called atmosphere. So how do we feel air? Now since air is invisible, we cannot see air. So it will make us forget that air is present around us. So how do we feel air? <clears throat> but when we, uh, when we blow the balloon, when we blow air into the balloon, then we can see, we can feel the movement of balloon pushing on, movement of air pushing onto the balloon. <clears throat> or when we sit in front of the fan, we can actually feel the moving of air, moving our hair in the same direction. So we can feel the air when it moves. So moving air is called wind. <clears throat> so if I have to give you the example of the wind in a sentence, then it should be like uh, there is a light wind coming from the beach or the desert wind is warm. So that means wind, that means air. It is present everywhere around us. Now think of the empty bottle or empty glass or empty box. Are they really empty? You, so, so to find that out, because what we have learned is air is present everywhere. So to find that out whether they are empty or not, let's do one activity. <clears throat> Now here, actually you need a bowl that you can do at home. So here I have got a box, plastic box, which I have filled it with water. And what you need is an empty uh, bottle, okay? So this bottle looks empty, isn't it? So what we can say, this bottle is empty, right? Now what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to put the neck of this bottle down in the water. Now let's do that. Now while doing this, what happened? Can you see the water does not enter the bottle? Why? Why the water does not enter the bottle? Because this bottle is not empty. Air has already filled the space inside this bottle. So how do we know that? Let's tilt the bottle slightly. Now by tilting the bottle slightly, what happens? I'm going to do that. I'm tilting. So let's tilt the bottle slightly. So see what happens when I tilt it. See the air bubble. The air bubble, air bubble comes out from the bottle, creating a space inside the bottle. Okay. So in that way, then only after the air bubbles go out of the bottle, there is a space inside the bottle. Then the water can enter the bottle. So this activity it proves that air is present everywhere even the bottle or the glass which you can see empty actually they are not empty there is air inside them okay so now air a mixture of gases so now you know if you see the history of air in ancient time air was considered as an element so it was in 1674 an English chemist, John Mayer, he uh, found out that air has two main components. Components means of what the air is made up of. So the two main components of air he has he found out and out of which one of the component is very active and the other one is inactive. Okay, then again in the year 1789, uh, a French uh, chemist, uh, Antoine Lavoisier, 
he found out that these two components of air are present in the ratio of 1 is to 4 by volume. So these two components today we call it as oxygen and nitrogen. So the two main components of air are oxygen and nitrogen. And this Antoine Lavoisier, he also found out the uses of oxygen. Oxygen they are used in respiration also and they are also used in uh, the burning of substances. So naturally which component do you think is active? It is obviously oxygen. So what is air exactly then? Now air actually it is a mixture of gases. Air contains a different types of gases. So if you see the main components of air, they are nitrogen and oxygen. So the air contains about 78% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen. And besides this, the air also has 1% of other gases in small amount like carbon dioxide is also present in the air and the percentage of carbon dioxide in the air is 0.2 to 0.3 percent. Then uh, water vapor is also present in the air. Then inert gases which are also called noble gases. They are present in 0.9 percent. And the air also contains some dust and uh, dust particles and impurities but the amount of these particles present in the air are not fixed they varies so so the components of air is not same everywhere it varies from place to place according to the altitude or according to the different seasons so especially for example the amount uh, the air the air in the mountain especially According to their altitude in the higher mountains, the amount of oxygen in the air is low, okay, compared to uh, the amount of oxygen down in the plains. Then again, the uh, components of air are not also, I mean, varies uh, in certain periods of time, especially in different seasons. Say, let's take the example of rainy seasons. During rainy season, air has become humid and it contains more water vapor okay uh, compared to